Uh, it is a huge honor uh, to be able to call Gail a friend and to have her come up on stage to briefly talk um, about her life. <laughs> Thank you very much, Noel, and I am so honored to be here. I do love Civic Hall. People say I should get a cot, because I'm here so often, and I prefer to go into the movies. So it's exciting for you who haven't been here, come back often. And I want to thank uh, Noel for organizing this. I want to thank Aisha Irfan and Will Colgrove from our office, because they help a whole lot on this issue. And I think there are some high school students. Are there any high school students here today? Look at this, see, that's fabulous. Look at this. So I think you have heard so much today, but it is absolutely true. The data collection informs everything we do as a society, from our consumer purchases to how we get news, to our educational choices, to where we decide to live. Each and every one of us is constantly producing and releasing data about ourselves. We do this when we swipe our Metro cards in the subway, when we use Yelp to find the closest coffee shop for a first date, at least you do, when we choose to buy Pepsi over Coke. And given that 90%, this is an amazing statistic, of the world's data has been generated over the past two years with over 2.5 quintillion bytes of data being created daily, it should come to no surprise that data science as is an exciting new field that the Harvard Business Review has called, I don't know if this is true, the sexiest job of the 21st century. <laughs> By uncovering patterns in large amounts of information, data science has emerged as an interdisciplinary field leveraging traditional studies of statistics, computer science, and psychology. Data scientists determine which results Google will show you. I think we know that who Facebook recommends you become friends with, what movies and shows Netflix recommends you like. I hate that part. And even who to match up with you on Coffee Meets Bagel and Hinge. And increasingly, government, thank goodness, as you heard from the wonderful partners here today, is also using data science to inform policy decisions that impact our everyday lives. This is the part that I love. From where to open parks to where schools are built in anticipation of neighborhood demographic, demographic shifting. That's a little scared when you have the gentrification that our speaker knows and we're working on so hard. But also how neighborhoods are policed. To the credit of NYPD and to the credit of the Civilian Complaint Review Board, independently they are using data science to build models to predict police officers' misbehavior before it happens, that's incredibly important. Incredibly important. And as you heard earlier, along with Will and Noel and John, nobody does this alone. One of my proudest moments was passing the open data law in March 2012. It did unlock a treasure trove of data about streets and crime and restaurant inspections and all the information that's gathered by 311 and city agencies. And the a public availability of these free data sets in machine-readable formats, although we're still working on that, has led to a cottage, cottage industry in civic apps that use community planning tools, which have been incredibly important as we work on East Harlem and Inwood and other rezonings, data visualization advances in mapping, and public value mobile apps. Entrepreneurs, like many of you in this room, have created business models that organize and share and leverage these free databases in ways that can be monetized. We have companies like Mind My Business and SiteComply and Jobs that are solving community issues. And I've met with these companies and they're using the data. More importantly, they're also telling us what's wrong with the data and where it can be improved and the city agencies appreciate that. There are new fields of work, civic hackers, technologists, big data analysts, they're starting to emerge. And we have been working with them to have new curricula and trainings and degrees developed around these skill sets as Noel is doing today. Thanks to Noel, thanks to Will, thanks to others. We've been working with CUNY Service Corp and local, uh, the local nonprofits that you know so well, Beta NYC and Noel, to apply this data science borough-wide by training CUNY students to utilize city data 
for local problem solving. I can't tell you how great this is and to listen to the discussions that take place. These students have been matched just recently with community boards in Manhattan to analyze local data for community decision making. Some of the young people here today, they just raised their hands, or they will, those are the high school students, but the students are here also, and you'll get a chance to see their incredible work later on with 311 data. And I know there's uh, Rich Robbins is here from Board 7, and Marie Winfield is here from Board 11, and it's been funded by the Fund for the City of New York. The community boards get it. It's good for the borough, it's good for the city, it's a great experience for the service core members, but we gotta do more. We gotta do more for young people, and we gotta do more for future leaders in this emerging field. McKinsey study predicts that by 2018, the number of US data science jobs will exceed 490,000, but there will be fewer than 200,000, unless we work on it, qualified data scientists to fill them. So we have to ask ourselves two questions. What are the schools doing to prepare our students for the new economy in this field that applies to every career sector? And two, how do we create culturally responsive data scientists and use data science as a tool for community empowerment? Data science is the answer to both helping young people become meaningfully engaged in their neighborhoods and teaching them skills that will benefit them in every single field. That's why my office, the Manhattan Borough President's Office, is launching our Data Science Initiative where students will learn how to use open data to visualize their own neighborhoods, think through which stakeholders are making decisions in their communities and inform local policy decisions. For too long, we've attempted to teach students both about statistics, I hated those courses, but I got through them, and civic engagement, which I love, through theories and textbooks, but not by actually analyzing real world problems and coming up with solutions. Data science has the potential to provide students an alternative to traditional math with a curriculum grounded in data collection. I like it when New York City is first, but Los Angeles is already ahead of us in this game. UCLA, the National Science Foundation, and the school district there successfully partnered to pilot data science classes in 10 public schools, and this is what they found. They found that the algebra assessment tests had been failed by students, but they passed their data science course. As a first step, we will convene a data science task force to help design a high school curriculum, partnering with colleges and educators and technologists across the city. Students will use open data, the one that has been discussed so much, to carry out projects about real world problems in their communities. We'll incorporate multidisciplinary STEM teacher teams. We will provide inquiry-based professional development for 50 teachers in Manhattan to teach data science in our high schools. And I want to just talk about some of the benchmarks that are so important for student learning. Number one, the nature of data, its representation, formats, for protocols for sharing. Number two, computational thinking, problem solving, logic, which is really the heart of computer science. Number three, algorithms, the rules governing data collection and strategies for analysis. Number four, statistics, oh God. Visualization, basic inferences. Number five, the intersection of math and science. And number six, of course, just all those problem solving skills. At the state level, we intend to establish a computer science teaching credential and allow data sciences course to supplement the participation in government course, the engagement. And we'll also research and assess student learning, analyze teacher participation and their use of inquiry-based teaching and learning. Getting behind a data science curriculum is a natural for me, given my work on technology and my lifelong, lifelong support of young people. Everybody knows I love interns. I strongly believe that if we expect young people to be involved in the political process, it is our job to make politics real for them. With people in this room on the state and federal city, state and city level, city council legislation and state legislation passed to lower the eligibility age to serve on New York City community boards from 18 to 16. 
and there are 16 year olds on community boards in the five boroughs, not Queens, that's another story. Um, and I, of course, would love if the voting age, this is very controversial, in municipal elections was lowered to age 16. I want to thank Alex Bar Barrett, who's here today, because when I was pushing that, he was the only one helping me. His parents didn't even support me. <laughs> and my office is in process of reviewing applications for membership on our young leaders of Manhattan. We have a council designed to give me information and support from young people. So finally, it is vital that young people be skilled in data science if they wish to understand and shape the world we live in. We need to give New York City's young people the tools to make decisions about their own neighborhoods using cutting edge 21st century tools. And I believe our data science initiative will get them there. Thank you very much to everybody.